Hey, I thought I told you never to call me here. Yeah, well, that's just it. You didn't think. Yep, yeah, I gotta go. Hello, and welcome to another trippy food tale from the vault. On today's episode, we go back to 2012, when friend and LA food personality Eddie Lynn and I decide to cook an iguana that was provided by exoticmeatmarket.com. So join us if you will, and uh, let's eat some iguana. Hi, this is Valentino Herrera with Trippy Food, and we're gonna make something that, that I'm really looking forward to, something very special, iguana. Now, I sourced this iguana from Exotic Meats Online, and, uh, and this is a whole skinned, gutted uh, iguana. It's one whole piece. We're going to be cutting that up and we're going to stew it or roast it. And we're, typically I would want to do it with, with tomatoes, but I decided I'm going to go Caribbean. So I'm going to do use mango instead. And then for texture, uh, I'm going to put some hearts of palm and some uh, chayote squash in it. Um, and then just so that it's not overly sweet, I've got some serrano pepper that I'm going to put in there. And I'm also going to put in hibiscus flour, which I chose because it gives it a little bit of zest. It's almost citrusy, but also because it is the iguana's favorite food. So um, uh, it'll just bring everything full circle. We're going to cut this up. I'm going to, um, uh, I don't know if I mentioned the coconut. We're going to do it in mango and coconut. And I think we're going to have an interesting Caribbean flavored treat uh, featuring a Caribbean flavored reptile. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to get the milk out of the coconut, and to do that, these three soft spots, I'll just puncture that, and then we're going to drain them out. And then, afterwards, I'm going to break the coconut apart and, uh, and put it aside, and then we're going to grate that on top of our finished, finished mixture. Does he look familiar? There was a soft one. Okay. And I'm just gonna let that drain out. It's a boy, Mrs. Walker. It's a boy. Look at the size of this thing, man. This is huge. It's like one of those little capsules that you... Uh, there we go. It's like one of those little capsules that you put in water and it grows. Look at the size of this thing. Well, that is definitely an iguana. And it's definitely been gutted, so we've been spared the mercy of having to do that ourselves. So that is a pretty big, a pretty big size iguana. I imagine that their tails are usually twice as long as their body, so we would have had more tail on there. And uh, we've also been spared the grief of having to uh, decapitate this, so. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to cut off the limbs here. Um, these are going to go in the pot, but the four limbs we're going to just kind of saute or uh, stir fry just so that we can kind of taste them unfettered by the other ingredients that we're planning on putting in the stew. All right, ah, nothing like butchering a iguana to make you feel like a butcher. Okay, now it comes time where we're actually gonna start to cook it. So I'm just gonna take the segments and uh, I put a little bit of oil in here, just a little bit of garlic and not really anything else. And I'm gonna sear the pieces. As you can see, I'm just kind of searing the meat here. And then, uh, then I'm gonna add in the other ingredients. We're gonna put the lid on it and, uh, and let that cook. Okay, so I've put all the ingredients in here now. I've seared the meat, uh, and I left that in there. I just used a little bit of garlic with some grapeseed oil. Uh, and then I put the spices on there. So I put some Jamaican allspice, some cinnamon, and some cloves. I also put the uh, dried hibiscus uh, that I wanted to put in there. And then the um, what I wanted to give it for texture and, and other flavor is the mango, the uh, chayote squash, and the hearts of palm. So. I've got that in there and the coconut milk, uh, but the coconut milk is not enough to cover this and I want to make sure this is covered when we cook it. So I'm going to add a little bit more water here, just enough so that we cover this. 
And as soon as we bring this to a boil, we'll put the lid on and then within an hour or so, we're gonna be enjoying uh, iguana stew. Hi, I'm Eddie Lin of Deep End Dining and I'm here to do the stir fry part of this iguana experiment. Yeah, I, I'm the Asian guy, I get a, I get a play with the wok. Um, so, right here, over here, we have the remainder of the iguana. And if you recall, these are the, uh, the front legs. Or basically, Valentina just cut them in half so they're smaller pieces to work with. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do for a stir fry. So everything cooks evenly. So we're putting in some of this grape seed oil. And the, the wok is nice and hot. So the oil is going to basically be very watery. It's not going to be really viscous anymore. This is when you know the pan is hot enough to start cooking. Put in some uh, garlic. So we're going to grab these guys, toss them in the wok, with the other two. There you go. Uh, let them cook really nicely, brown them. So I'm going to add a little salt, a little pepper. I don't want to over season it because we want to have the natural flavor of the iguana, you know, able to come out. And I don't know if you're aware out there in uh, YouTube land, but Birds are, are uh, evolved from dinosaurs. You remember that scene in Jurassic Park? Well, yeah, good. So it's not, uh, you know, too surprising to to see that this this meat is is like chicken. I'm guessing that this is going to taste a little bit like alligator meat. I've had alligator, and at least for me personally. It has a flavor of poultry with a little bit of a, of a seafood note or a fish kind of flavor. And so it's just, it's just going to cook for a little while, uh, not much longer. And, uh, you know, we shall let you know what it tastes like. And I, I think it's going to taste great, like chicken. Now, time for a taste test. Look, they look exactly like little chicken winglets, right? Kind of like buffalo wings or... Mm. Wow! Mmm, it's nice and tender. You know what? It tastes exactly like chicken, except this one part over here. Tastes a little bit like liver. So, I'm not sure why that is, but if I didn't know any better, and if someone just put this plate in front of me, and then I had a bite, I would have to just say, hey, this is chicken. There's, yeah, there's no, no hint of uh, reptile. I just, yeah, I couldn't tell. All right. Even by looking at it, I couldn't tell. I mean, I defy anyone to be able to tell the difference between a chicken wing and an iguana leg. Okay, I think I want this kind of done piece here. It looks like there's a nice little piece of meat here. Now let's give this a shot. Mm. Well, there's some crunchy stuff in there like um, um, cartilages, I mean not uh, like a sinews or something. It doesn't really have a strong flavor. I'm, I mean I was expecting it to have a really strong flavor and it doesn't. So I can see where there'd be a comparison to, um, to chicken because it has a very very mild flavor. Anybody who's expecting this to be gamey or you know taste like something that crawls along the ground, it's just not there. Now, I know that the locals call this tree chicken or bamboo chicken. I can see why. It's because 
I would not be upset with somebody saying that this tasted like chicken. Really, there's really no, you know, there's really, there's not a taste that you can say this tastes like iguana. It just, it just isn't there. It's really good. And I think, um, I think just cooking it lightly with, um, you know, a little bit of um, salt and pepper and everything, I think was a good idea. So we can get the full taste of it, but you know, it's totally un un unoffensive. It's something that you could serve to somebody, not tell them what it is, and, um, and they would enjoy it until you told them what it was. This is really good. Well, here's the fruits of our labor. So here's the stew. Uh, I think it came out okay. Um, it looks like the uh, vegetables cooked down, but hopefully they have some texture to it. And the meat looks nice and uh, nicely cooked. And then I did some yucca fries in the front here. Uh, so kind of a, a nice Caribbean meal. So I'm just going to take a piece of this. And I could be uh, polite and use a knife and fork, but I think I'm just going to pick up a piece and eat it. So here we go. Oh, mmm. Everything that I put in the stew totally works with this. So it, it flavors, it permeates the meat. We already knew what the meat tasted like from the fried piece that we had. But this, it just, it, it absorbed all, everything that was in the broth. It's tender, it's juicy. This is a piece of the tail. Oh man. This is absolutely delicious. The spices are uh, not overpowering. Um, I put a little bit of the serrano pepper in there, so it has a little bit of a spice to it, but it's not it's not crazy. This is absolutely delicious. Oh man, I could eat this all year. This is this is really good. Mm. Oh, piece of the yucca. Not much different than a potato, but something you'll find throughout the Caribbean. And then I'm going to have some of the um, little vegetables and fruit. See what that tastes like. Mmm. The chayote squash, still firm. It doesn't have much flavor on its own, so I picked up the flavor from the mango is um, tart. Not crazy tart, but, and sweet. This is wonderful. This is really good. I'll have Eddie try it now. Okay, my turn. It smells nice. Hmm, very tender. This is really delicious. I was in Jamaica not so long ago, and I had a lot of, um, fish dishes, um, normally steamed, that um, had certain flavors like this, that, that were kind of sour, um, spicy, and um, a little bit sweet, but this this has that profile. So it, uh, you know, because this is an iguana, um, it does work. Um, with this flavor, it's like a Caribbean, um, definitely a Caribbean influence in this dish. And the mango is great. Um, I didn't get a piece of chayote yet. Mm. Really good. Just like Valentino says, it picks up the flavor and it's still firm. But I love it. It's, it's unlike anything I've really had. Um, definitely never had iguana before, but with these uh, unique seasonings, I think it works great. It's it's something that I would actually go out and get. So great job, Val. Mm. Thanks for checking out Trippy Food. If you enjoyed watching that video half as much as I did making it, well then I enjoyed it twice as much as you did. And if that's the case, you'll probably like this video right here. And if not, check out this video right here. That one's a little bit different. Either way, leave a comment down below. And be sure to subscribe by clicking on the Trippy Food icon right here. Glad you could make it, and we hope to see you again soon.